the Acolyte in Star Wars is, of course, such a big deal. So when you got that call from Leslie Headland, what was your immediate reaction? And how long did it take for you to actually believe that you're part of the Star Wars universe? Um, I mean, it was a surreal feeling getting that voicemail because she left a voicemail on my phone. Um, and I remember just repeating that voicemail over and over again, uh, making sure that she didn't get the wrong number. Um, but it was, it was incredible. And I didn't, when she gave me that call, um, we didn't start working on it until maybe, I don't know, six months after. So it wasn't really until I was on set where I was just like, okay, I'm actually a part of this. There's always this feeling of like, it could get taken away from you really quick. So I was always trying to keep my expectations low. I was always trying to keep it cool. Um, cause yeah, you just never know if, uh, if uh, they made a mistake. <laughs> so you didn't believe it until it was actually there. That's, that's nice. Yeah. Or even like until it's out, to be honest, because you, you, you never even know um, what, what ends up on screen. But yeah, uh, I think at that one point, maybe in like by episode four or five, I was like, okay, I'm actually a part of this universe. So um, of course, The Good Place established you as a comedic talent. And, but mm. it was your performance in Nine Perfect Strangers that landed you this role. But mm. what excited you the most about portraying a character in Star Wars? I mean, it, it wasn't necessarily just portraying a role in Star Wars. It was the, the role that Leslie presented to me in particular. Like she, when we had our first meeting, she had a very particular vision for this character and and how it would how he would interact with like the Jedi and kind of bring a, a greater um, sense of aloofness or a comedic sensibility um, for uh, for the acolyte. And I love that. I love that I didn't have to be like a stoic, serious Jedi that I can be the guy who um, makes the audience laugh, you know, especially in in Star Wars because it's so rooted in such deep serious themes like if you have a comedic character he tends to stand out and that's what i was really excited about can you give us some hints about the role um your character plays within the larger acolyte within the larger acolyte story uh i mean again so many spoilers so many twists and turns um i mean you initially see his relationship with may uh at first and kind of that that dynamic is talking to Amanda and talking to Leslie about it we established it very much as like a love-hate relationship it's it's a it's like a brother and sister relationship and they hate each other but they need each other and you kind of just see how that relationship evolves um in order to survive or appease like uh the master um that May is carrying this mission for so yeah, uh, it's it's very much you definitely get to see how how that dynamic evolves throughout the story. And how did you prepare for this role? Were there any special preparations? Did you have to watch the whole Star Wars saga? Anything <laughs> like that? I mean, I I started watching Star Wars when uh, when I got the word that you know um, Leslie wanted me to come and play, uh, but I I got overwhelmed. <laughs> There's so much Star Wars. Like I started, I think I wanted to go from episode one up until the end. And I just found myself overwhelmed by the amount of, of information. And I loved all those movies when I was watching it as a kid and until adulthood. But to consume it all at once was, was a big feat. And oh, what I love about my character is that he's not rooted in any of the previous iconic characters. He has his own take. He's creating his own path. And I think that was a benefit to not study so much about the previous characters. Um, and I just found characteristics of Chimir in, uh, like in um, Jack Sparrow in, in Pirates of the Caribbean. I found bits of him in uh, Toshiro Mifune's uh, Seven Samurai. I just you know i rooted him in other projects as opposed to um star wars projects 
Well, the Acolyte is such a diverse cast. I loved watching Lee Jung Jae as the Jedi Master. Now, as a Filipino-Canadian actor, what does it mean for you to be such a part of a diverse cast in such a, a long-standing saga? I mean, it, it means the world. It's it's so I'm so grateful. I'm so uh, it boggles my mind that I'm I'm part of not just a part of Star Wars, but I'm a part of a, a Star Wars that has so many people of color in it. Um, it's like the ideal Star Wars to be a part of because, uh, yeah, you don't want to just be a part of any Star Wars. You want to be a part of like a Star Wars that inspires um, people that look like you. You know, you want to be a part of a Star Wars that has a story to tell. Uh, and it's it's such a it's such a huge blessing to be able to be a part of something like this, because, um, yeah, it makes me so proud, uh, not just of the work, but that the fact that we get to yeah, inspire little Filipinos um, to either become Jedi or just to become storytellers. And of course, the role comes with a sort of pressure. Star Wars is a, a fan base, uh, has a passionate fan base. So how do you approach the potential for scrutiny from dedicated fans? Yeah, I mean, I think it comes with the territory and in all aspects, in all different projects. Like, it's just so much more prominent because the fan base is so vast and passionate. Um, I've learned early on in my career when I first started is if you're going to believe the good, you have to believe the bad. So essentially what that means for me is you just have to, you know, shut out the noise and just put your head down and do the work. And yeah, for me, that's all that really matters is, is just being proud of the work that, that we did. And I am so proud and I feel so creatively fulfilled in this series. And yeah, at the end of the day, it's kind of what matters most um, if I want to keep going on this acting path or creative path. So if, you, if your character is in the good place, the acolyte and nine perfect strangers meet, what do you think would they be doing? Oh my gosh. Um, I think they would be uh, in Disneyland playing around with fake lightsabers, having a great time, um, eating turkey legs, and uh, going on the roller coasters. I think that's what they would be doing. Just having a, a blast with each other.